Today I'm going to be showing you my corn snakes and my crested geckos. So last time we did leopard geckos and I showed you Noodle the ball python, whereas this time we're going to start off with Quetzal. Quetzal is a snow corn snake. So like with the leopard geckos, with their different morphs of their different colorings, corn snakes have the exact same thing. In fact, most reptiles go by morphs for their colors. So Quetzal here is a snow morph, which means he's got this sort of the white underneath and he's got these little sort of orange X's along his body. And then they go out into just little stripes and spots as he goes. He has a pure white belly. Now see your belly. There's his belly. He's got a pure white belly and he's got red eyes. <laughs> Quite so back up a little buddy. Now if you look at his eyes you'll see they look a little bit cloudy. Give him a second to calm down. Um, hopefully it'll show up on the camera, but they're a little bit cloudy, Quetzal, um, because he's going into shed. So snakes don't have eyelids. What they have instead is they have a eye cap. So it's a clear, thin piece of skin that's on top of the eyeball, and it's there and it's rigid and it's hard, so that if they went past something like brambles or something in the wild and it brushed against it, it's not going to hurt the eye, it's just going to touch the skin. So when they shed, they actually shed off those eye caps at the same time. So when he's going to go into shed, the eyes go a bit cloudy because the skin over the eyeball is lifting off and it's turning white. It's like if you ever got a little bit of dry skin on your finger or on your foot and it's like a little white bubble. That's exactly what's happening with his eyes right now. So he has red eyes, so he's a little bit more light sensitive, kind of like albinos. The way they don't like light as much because it can hurt their eyes so that's why he's a little bit jumpy right now because he was in his cave asleep and i lifted it off him and now he's confused about what's going on but it doesn't hurt them or anything it's just a little bit more it's a little brighter to them than it is to us so he's also a bit jumpy right now because of the fact that it's usually his bedtime right now uh these guys they get up around the evening time these guys are mostly about evening and really really early in the morning Whereas right now, it's about three o'clock here right now. So he isn't used to being up this early. Buddy, come back. I can't get you if you run away or slide away. Um, yeah, so he's a, little, he's a little bit unhappy with me because of the fact that I've woken him up a little bit before he was meant to. But other than that, they're lovely, lovely snakes. Super tame. Wouldn't bite you for any reason except for maybe a mistake. Or the babies are a little bit feisty. They might try to eat you, but they can't because they're so small. They're like a piece of spaghetti. They can't do anything to you. You'll see he's sticking out his tongue. I think I've said this with Noodle, but if not, I'll just say it again just in case. But what they have is they've got a gland inside their mouth that lets them taste smells. So they use this in the wild to hunt for mice or for dinner or to find uh, a mate or to see if there's another snake in the territory that might fight them for where they're living. So what they do is they lick the air and it pushes the air into their mouth and they've got a little gland on the roof of their mouth called a Jonasson's gland, I think it is. And what this does is it lets them create an image in their head that they associate with something in particular. So they might lick the air and their brain goes, ah, that's the smell of a mouse, that's for dinner. Or it might make a picture of another snake and they're like, oh, that's bad, I should leave here before I get eaten. Quetzal, so where are you going? Buddy. No, don't go escaping onto the table now. Come back. Come back. I know. I'm sorry. And straight back into the corner. <laughs> For food, corn snakes eat rats or mice or chicks. So they'll eat one of the three. My guys are all on small rats. So what I do is I go to the pet shop and they have them there frozen and all I have to do is thaw them out and wiggle them around and the snakes will get them and eat them. Now, I've been bitten once by a corn snake, only once, and it's because I was wiggling the rat in front. It wasn't Quetzal, it was a different one called, oh, who was it? Pretzel, it was Pretzel. Pretzel bit me because I was wiggling a rat in front of her and she couldn't aim very well, so she grabbed just here, and it wasn't even as bad as a paper cut. Reaching into my bag and grabbing a book and getting a paper cut was way worse. It stings really bad, but snakes, I didn't even know she'd bitten me until I looked after. The little, little bite mark, just, just here, real small. 
but they're really really tame they're really good you can pick them up you can handle them you can pet them they're completely fine they're wonderful wonderful pets and they're one of the most popular pet snakes because of how good they are it's gonna be my new neck it's gonna be the new style after lockdown watch all, all neckers will just be snakes where are we gonna put the badges though Next I'm going to be showing you the crested geckos that I have. So here we have Hopip and Skiploom and Jumpluff is upstairs. They're named after Pokemon. <laughs> so Hopip here is the male. So he's actually a good bit bigger than herself. I'll take him out and show you. So I'm actually going to look, do overhead for a second, just show. So you can see she's way smaller than he's, he's a, he's a pig. He eats everything including stuff he's not meant to. These guys are kept in a tank that's called bioactive. So that's basically where it's its own tiny ecosystem where it's got plants in it and bugs and dirt and everything is growing as if it's its own little, its own little world. So I'll put this. These guys have got something that none of my other guys have and that's sticky feet. So you'll see his toes are actually really wide and curly and it's because of the fact that they actually can stick onto glass and plastic and everything. They're also extremely fast. Yeah, don't you start. Tell me. They're extremely fast and lovely little guys, but it means they can be a little bit difficult to control. So crested geckos are called crested geckos because you'll see the back of his head there, he has two crests, the little sticky out sort of frilly bits on either side. Hi, nobody. I'm not touching you, but you're not jumping. Because if you jump, you'll be gone. So, crested geckos are called because they have these crests, and you can see it starts from here, and it goes all the way down their back to their butt. Don't start sprinting away. These guys, mm-hmm, come here. Can jump very well, as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted. Uh, they can jump very, very well, so these guys are kept in a really tall enclosure. So the enclosure is about three feet tall by a foot and a half by a foot and a half. So it's way taller than it is wide. And that means that they have loads of space to climb and jump and be geckos. These guys eat bugs, but they also eat fruit. So they like fruits and they like nectar and flowers. So they like, say, if I mash up a banana or apricots, he really likes apricot. The other two like banana. So he'll eat banana anyway because he's again a pig but he prefers apricot so these guys they eat a fruit mix it's a it's like a dried powder and you mix it with water to make like a jelly and you let it set and they'll lick it up from a little bowl and it's it's brilliant it's really easy because i don't have to keep their food alive because it's just powder whereas they'll eat bugs as well so they get bugs like the leopard geckos would they eat the same ones the mealworms crickets roaches all the little guys these guys are super, super pretty because they come, again, all the different morphs. He is an extreme harlequin, is what it's called. And that means he's got all these patterns going up his sides. Come back, sir. Thank you. As I was saying, he's got patterns going up his sides. And then he also has the lovely colourful line down his back. He also has a lovely bright white tail. He's considering jumping at the camera and I hope he doesn't because he'll flatten himself. Come back, please. They're very jumpy. They're wonderful pets, but you just need to be very quick because sometimes they'll, if they get down or they get away, they're going to run up the wall or jump off a table. Buddy, you gotta stop. <laughs> the best and easiest way, block their way forward and they can't jump anymore. But like, they're lovely, lovely animals. They're just so fast and so determined to escape. 
no matter how tame they are, they hop around the place like maniacs. No, no, no. See you gathering your little frog butt. <laughs> right, putting you in for a second because you're getting a little too hyped. All right, you go in there. We'll bring yourself out. She is one of my favorites. She's a completely different color. There you go, buddy, show it off, show off. So she's got kind of like tiger stripes down her side and she's a kind of a light brownish color. Now, when the one, one of the cool things about crested geckos, you probably know chameleons and they change their color. So chameleons tend to change their color when they're angry or when they're scared or when they're dating. And um, crested geckos are different. What they do is they do something called firing up. So right now she's fired down. So she's more of a dull color to blend in with her surroundings. And so that in the forest right now, she could sort of sit underneath a leaf and pretend to be that leaf. Whereas he is fired up where he's got the bright white and the orange on him. When she fires up, she turns a really, really bright orange, a really light orange. Um, if I can find a picture, I'll throw it into the video now so you can see, but she changes color completely. So with crested geckos, you might buy one that's white and it ends up turning green when it fires up or it ends up turning black when it fires up. And it's really, really cool. I just really like it. I think it's super interesting. Another name you'll hear for crested geckos sometimes is an eyelash gecko. Because if you look at their eyes, they have crests over their eyes as well. And it kind of looks like they've got really, really nice eyelashes. And I think himself, no, it's not himself. I've, I've another female. She's upstairs. She, uh, she was fighting me. She didn't really want to come downstairs. She was being grumpy, but her eyelashes are black. So it makes her look like she's got really nice false eyelashes in or mascara. And it's just, it's just really pretty. It's cool. But these guys are just awesome little pets. Aren't you? You are. You're really cool. One thing about these guys, leopard geckos, when they lose their tails, it grows back. These guys don't. If they drop their tail, they can drop it the exact same as a leopard gecko and it'll wiggle around for about 20 minutes or so so the the predators think they have them however let go of my jumper bud however these guys they don't grow back so it ends up breaking off just about here and they end up looking like little frog butts Are you jumping you jumping well done a little hop Ooh, there we go but they're lovely 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 Look at the curl. They curl up their toes like this when they don't want to stick to something. And I think it just looks really funny. Whereas on glass, they'll have them flat because they need all the grip they can. The bottom, can you see the bottom of the toes on the camera? Is it a good view? It's almost, it looks kind of like a fingerprint or whatever. And these are tiny little hairs. They're not actually hairs, but they're classed as hairs because they're really, really small and thin. And what they do is they suction against the wall, like tiny little suction cups for grip. And that's why they can go on smooth surfaces. And when they're trying not to stick to stuff, they're just walking. They put them upwards so they don't accidentally stick because they want to be able to run around and explore and hunt for bugs without sticking to everything. Whereas on my arm, you'll see she has her fingers mostly flat because she's trying to She's trying to climb and stick. No, no, don't go that far up. Come back. Don't watch it fall up. There we go. So yeah, that's the crested geckos. And I think they're great. So that's it for the crested geckos and the corn snakes. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask your leaders. And if they message me, then I can answer them and do my best to explain if I said something that was weird. So thank you very much for watching and I hope everyone is well.